Getting started with LibreOffice development, I am Hossein Nurikha, the Developer Committee Architect for the Document Foundation TDF. So these are the list of contents I will talk about and after a short self-introduction I will talk about learning sources and we will have a short demo then we will talk about setting up development environment and compiling the code in demo 2 and after that we will talk about short things that you can do called easy hacks then we will talk about review process and in the end I will provide you some path to growth and development. So I am a PhD in information technology, I'm a developer community architect for the Techman Foundation and I'm a developer, university lecturer and FOSS advocate. If you had any problems getting started with LibreOffice development you can contact me. My email is hossein at libreoffice.org and you can find me on IRC hossein at LibreOffice dev in the bar chat. So let's talk about learning process. How do uh, someone can learn to develop LibreOffice? The answer is by coding. If you want to learn LibreOffice coding, you should start development as soon as possible. So one can contribute uh, to LibreOffice without code, but I'm here focused on coding. So you should know at least one programming language. Language. There are a lot of languages that can be used, uh, and these are the list of languages that are actually used in LibreOffice code: C, C++, Java, Bash, JavaScript, Python, Perl, SQL, and XML are some of these. And to know LibreOffice better, you can refer to some of the learning materials that I will provide you in this. Uh, presentation. So learning materials are not inside one document that you can read, but there are many sources that you should use in order to better understand LibreOffice. So as I've said, the best way uh, to learn coding is actually to code. So you should start from easiest stuff first, that we call easy hacks. And the path uh, to understand better the code is to search, to read, to ask other developers, and to code. These are some of the learning sources from the LibreOffice website to the Git repository of code uh, for LibreOffice core to IRC, mailing list, wiki, docs, blog, the presentation from conference, and some articles and books. So, Let's first look at the LibreOffice website. In LibreOffice website, you can download LibreOffice. You can download LibreOffice SDK, which I suggest you should uh, download both of these. And you will find a lot of information. Also, you can refer to documentfoundation.org, the uh, entity behind uh, LibreOffice. So uh, this can help you better understand LibreOffice. So before you can uh, actually start coding LibreOffice, uh, it is suggested that you actually uh, work with LibreOffice and use it to edit your documents, to get, uh, get yourself familiarized with LibreOffice. And this is something uh, very helpful before you get into actual coding. Then the code. You can find the code on git.libreoffice.org, but there is something called opengrok.libreoffice.org that um, helps you to search inside the code. You can uh, do full text search, you can search for some uh, definition of some uh, classes and functions, you can find symbols, and you can read the code um, with a uh, great uh, coloring and uh, style here in OpenGrok. And then IRC. IRC is uh, the best way to connect to other developers. There are a lot of experienced developers here uh, that are willing to help you develop LibreOffice. So if you're joining IRC, uh, it's better to 
uh, create an account, pick a good name, and ask directly inside LibreOffice Dev Room. And please make sure you stay um, here for a while, for example, uh, 60 minutes, in order to get an uh, answer from these uh, developers and other uh, others who work on LibreOffice. Uh, you can uh, get answers better if you ask your question uh, inside uh, the EU working hours. So this is a good place to ask questions. Then it's uh, developers mailing list. So if you have a question that uh, probably cannot be answered uh, in IRC and it needs some uh, more details and some more investigation and uh, stuff like that, it's good to use developer mailing list. So you can uh, ask questions here and uh, this uh, mailing list is actually hostelandfreedesktop.org so, so you can uh, become a member of this uh, mailing list and ask your questions and read others answers. Then Wiki. Wiki is a good place uh, that you can find a lot of information about uh, development. So if you go to uh, development section of the Document Foundation Wiki you can find a lot of uh, documents on how to build the profits, how to uh, find uh, suitable things that you can work on and possible ideas and a lot of good stuff here. So make sure that uh, you refer to Wiki. And then Docs. Uh, if you go to docs.libreoffice.org you will find the list of LibreOffice modules and if you click on uh, any of them you will find uh, good information about it then the blogs so we have blog.documentfoundation.org which is the main blog for uh, LibreOffice you can find a lot of information not necessarily about development but a lot of development uh, posts can be found there also uh, we are uh, starting a new uh, blog for development related stuff only and uh, it will be hosted on dev.blog.documentfoundation.org uh, but it is not uh, started yet so it will um, uh, so it will start very soon if you go to the libocon page on conference.libreoffice.org you will find uh, a lot of presentations about different things and this can be also a good source of information for you to understand LibreOffice better and let's uh, see these things uh, in action. The first website that I want to talk about is the LibreOffice website. It is located at LibreOffice.org. I can download LibreOffice from here. I can select uh, different formats and I can download uh, LibreOffice SDK and also the source code from here. Um, I suggest that you don't download source code from here but use the latest Git version because in order to uh, get involved in development you need the latest sources. Um, there are a lot of more information inside LibreOffice.org about how to um, join the, those people who are working on LibreOffice. Uh, you can find find out more about LibreOffice here and you can donate to LibreOffice. Uh, the next website uh, is the documentfoundation.org. It's about uh, Document Foundation, the uh, non-profit organization uh, that is behind LibreOffice and uh, you can find a lot of useful information here. 
When you found enough about LibreOffice and you want to work in code, uh, you can use OpenGrok and also you can use uh, git.libreoffice.org. If you go to this website, you can see a lot of projects here. But what we are interested in is the core, which is the LibreOffice main development code repository. As you can see, you can uh, get the sources by invoking git clone, uh, then the address. So these are the latest commits on LibreOffice core, and this is an introduction on uh, LibreOffice uh, core and the things that you need in order to build LibreOffice and also some of the uh, main repository, uh, main uh, modules. So then we can talk about OpenGrok. OpenGrok is something that is very useful and you want to search inside the code. Uh, these days uh, a lot of IDEs uh, provide such uh, utilities, but this is also very useful if you want to uh, look at the uh, symbols and uh, other stuff. So uh, first you select a project, we usually select core and it is pre-selected here. Uh, consider that I'm looking for OU uh, string buffer and OU string buffer. So I'm searching for this symbol and the result uh, are a lot of OU string buffers. But what if I want to search for the definition? I uh, put the OU string buffer inside definitions and when I search I only find four results and the first one is something that I wanted. If I activate the navigate window I see that uh, there are a lot of macros, classes, one class and uh, uh, some namespaces and a lot of functions and uh, stuff like that inside this header file and when I click OU string buffer I actually see the uh, OU string buffer class here and as you can see everything almost everything is hyperlinked here so for example if I click on cell warn on use I will be directed to some file that contains the uh, definition of uh, this uh, macro. So I click on uh, line uh, 487 uh, from 484 uh, it actually contains the definition of this macro. So as you can see it is a helpful tool in order to browse the code. Then we will talk about IRC so uh, web.libre.chat is a web interface to LibreChat and I want to go to LibreOffice Dev channel and my nickname will be guest8 but it's better to pick a, a good name and register your name so uh, you can see a lot of people are here and many of them are uh, developers and uh, they can help you if you have any problems. So it is a good idea that if you uh, want to ask, you ask directly and don't uh, waste time uh, asking for asking question. Directly ask your question and wait until you get your answer. It is uh, suggest that you at least remain uh, for 60 minutes in order to get uh, good answers. And uh, also uh, you should uh, try to uh, ask questions in a smart way, smart way in order to get uh, good answers. So uh, people here are uh, uh, will usually try to help you 
but there are some situations that you want to uh, ask um, some more complex questions that uh, need for example more information and uh, in order to ask such questions you can go to list.freedesktop.org uh, and uh, subscribe uh, in LibreOffice development a mailing list so you just add your uh, email address here and you click, uh, click subscribe after you prove that you're not a robot then we talk about LibreOffice wiki so the document foundations wiki which talks about uh, mostly LibreOffice uh, contains a development section that we are interested in so there's a getting you started with development section contains a lot of useful links for you uh, you should take a look at get involved uh, article it contains uh, a lot of useful information that uh, we talk about some of them but make sure that you take a look also there is a general program guidelines section that contains a lot of good information about building the process for example on Linux and BSC systems and Mac OS and Windows etc so please make sure that you take a look on wiki then uh, there is the docs.libreoffice.org which essentially contains documentation about LibreOffice modules I was looking at uh, documentation of Visual Class Library or VCL and you can find a lot of good information about this module here any other module you want then the blog.documentfoundation.org is somewhere that you can find a lot of uh, good information about things that are happening uh, around LibreOffice and you can see the link to TDF Planet uh, the aggregator uh, that aggregates uh, uh, posts from uh, people who work on LibreOffice um, because this web blog is not uh, uh, directly uh, related to development we try to we have tried to create a separate web blog for development at dev.blog.documentfoundation.org uh, it is not activated yet, yet but uh, in the recent uh, uh, future uh, we will activate this blog and uh, hopefully post a lot of useful information there and at last the LibreOffice conference website which contains information about the current LibreOffice uh, conference 2021 and also the previous conferences for example I go to the 2019 conference I go to the program schedule I go to one of these days for example September uh, 12th and I open one of these presentations for example LibreOffice as an iOS app on the iPad so you can find uh, a lot of information by, but looking, by looking at uh, these presentations they are very helpful uh, I hope that uh, you, have, uh, you have a better understanding of some of the sources of information about LibreOffice I think up a development environment so you can do this either manually or using distro tools and also you can use uh, an automated tool called LODE so if you're uh, not using LODE you have to install dependencies either manually or, or through distribution tools mostly in Linux so you have to install several libraries and tools and some of them are installed uh, using make and the make file actually knows what to download and install but not uh, every dependency can be installed in this way so there are other dependencies that you have to uh, install manually or using distro tools so if you are in Windows you should use CYGVIN to install those dependencies if you are Ubuntu 
you can use apt if you are an rgl or centos you use dnf or yum and uh, on arch and OpenSUSE, pacman and zipper can be used if you're using lode then you're using an automated tool for LibreOffice uh, that actually downloads, builds, and is installs all the prerequisites. So it is something very useful that is suggested for Windows and Mac OS and also on some older versions of Linux. You should note that you can use and you should use uh, distribution tools for newer versions of uh, Linux uh, like latest versions of Ubuntu or IHL or CentOS and also if you're on Windows you have to install Visual Studio and Windows SDK and JDK yourself and if you're on older uh, Linux distributions you have to install uh, some uh, recent compiler C++ compiler and JDK yourself and make it available to uh, the uh, make tool. These are the Windows prerequisites. Uh, you need a C++ compiler. Visual Studio 2019 is something that we use uh, these days, but uh, support for Visual Studio 2022 uh, is recently added, but 2019 is suggested. Uh, you have to install uh, Java Development Kit greater than equal to version 11 and it can be uh, either Oracle, from Oracle, from Microsoft, Red Hat and others but you should know that if you are downloading from Oracle you should create uh, an account but if you want to download from Microsoft or Red Hat you don't need uh, such an account. Then you need CYGVIN that can be downloaded from CYGVIN.com and uh, there are several uh, other dependencies if you're building manually. Uh, you should note that uh, there are certain things uh, that you should know when installing uh, these prerequisites. For example, if you are installing Visual Studio, you have to activate uh, and install certain components, uh, certain individual components. So you should uh, take a look at uh, building the profits on Windows and Wiki and uh, make sure that you are uh, actually uh, following the uh, needed steps. For Linux, uh, the C++ compiler G++ is used. You need also the Java Development Kit JDK greater than or equal 11 and third uh, dependencies that can be installed easily using the distribution tools. For example, on Ubuntu, you uh, simply say apt-get build dep libreoffice and everything is simply installed and also are uh, on RHEL based uh, distributions, you just say dnf build dep libreoffice and that's it. A lot of uh, packages will be installed and then you can build the libreoffice. So the recommended way to install dependencies is to use distro tools for most of them. And on Mac OS X, uh, you should have Xcode from App Store and also JDK greater than uh, or equal version 11. And the recommended way to install dependencies is using LODE. You should note that uh, the current Xcode and the current Mac OS X can usually build LibreOffice so it is suggested that you should use uh, current Xcode and current Mac OS X version. So let's talk about the actual compilation. The general compiling instructions uh, can be seen here. First of all uh, you should install the prerequisites as described in previous slides. Then you should get the source code, git clone and the address of the source code. Uh, please uh, note that there are a lot of projects inside git.libreoffice.org but we are interested in LibreOffice Core which is the uh, main application and libraries that uh, uh, are used to build LibreOffice itself. 
then uh, you should do configuration data slash auto gen dot edge and please note that it's a good idea to put all the options that you want to use with uh, auto gen in auto gen dot input we will talk about this later then you invoke make and then you will have sofis or sofis.exe uh, depending on uh, the operating system of yours if you are uh, for example Linux uh, you should look into instr slash program and you will find sofis and also uh, on Windows you will find sofis.exe in instr backslash program this is a sample autogen.input uh, as I've said you should put compile options inside autogen.input as you can see here I've set the JDK home for uh, JDK 11 here uh, I've enabled Python uh, to uh, and configured it to fully internal so a complete uh, Python interpreter will be built and I've enabled several uh, debug options uh, dbg util ld equals gold and gdb index and also I have enabled online update and then I have to set a privacy policy URL but because I'm uh, working on a test build I don't provide any URL so uh, I just say uh, no underlying URL or uh, something like this so if uh, in at this stage you're able to build the office then you can use uh, ID of your choice several integrated development environment can be used with uh, LibreOffice code uh, for example Visual Studio code is something that you don't need anything you just uh, open the uh, project and uh, then uh, everything can be visible inside uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, you can use the uh, C, C++ uh, development uh, uh, plugin or application inside Visual Studio Code that um, provide you a lot of options to uh, work with C, C++ code then uh, you can use Microsoft Visual Studio, you can use Qt Creator, KDevelop, VIM or Xcode and as you can see you should uh, invoke make with uh, appropriate option for example if you want to use Qt Creator you invoke make Qt Creator dash ID dash integration and then a project file is created and when you open that project file inside uh, Qt Creator you will see um, all the files and symbols and stuff like that and it helps you uh, develop inside this ID and the same for other IDs let's see a demo I want to build the office in Ubuntu Linux this is the latest LTS version of Ubuntu Linux uh, the uh, 20.04 version LTS uh, and uh, first of all I should make sure that I have all the dependencies so I invoke sudo apt get build dev libreoffice and there are mm, some packages that I need that are installed uh, this is uh, because I have installed all the prerequisites before and I only need to install 10 megabytes of uh, uh, data um, 10 megabytes of packages but you may have to install uh, a lot more if uh, you are building this for the first time so after uh, the uh, download and inst uh, install is complete uh, you can start uh, configuring and doing make and uh, stuff like that uh, to actually build the office um, you should uh, do this in other ways if you're using other distributions 
For example, if you are using RHEL or CentOS or Almary Linux, um, Almary Linux or uh, things like that, um, you should use uh, DNF, for example. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, uh, focused on Ubuntu right now. After that, I should uh, do git clone and then I will provide the git address uh, of the uh, LibreOffice repository. So this is um, uh, this takes a while in order to clone the LibreOffice source code. So I will uh, pause the video and after this is finished I will continue so the next step would be uh, configuring so first I should have a good autogen that input in place I have one with several options that you see um, I have talked about some of these options but you can see uh, a lot of other options here for example Qt5, KF5 and a lot of stuff here that you can find out more in LibreOffice Wiki. Uh, I won't talk about uh, them more in this video. So if I invoke that slash autogen that's edge, uh, first of all I should go to uh, in, inside the core folder and after that I will see the actual autogen that inputs uh, which contains a lot of options. For example, uh, uh, I, I've disabled GTK4 here by commenting this out. And uh, several options that you can find uh, more in uh, the wiki and I will not talk about them here. So if I invoke dot slash autogen that is edge, the actual uh, configuration script will execute and after a while you will see uh, the uh, answer for uh, different things and uh, this is it if you want to make you can invoke make uh, slash usr slash bin slash make or simply make if you want to get help you invoke make help and if you want to do some tasks you would make check. In order to run the uh, application after the successful build you should invoke instir slash program slash s office. So I invoke make. Uh, it usually takes a lot of time to be able to uh, build the process and uh, as a rule of thumb you should divide uh, 8 hours by the number of cores you have but this is somehow rough estimate so I invoke make and as you can see the uh, compilation process starts and because uh, I have done the uh, build before uh, possibly it takes um, a short time because I have done the build before and also I'm using a trick to uh, increase the speed of compilation and uh, be, I want to be able to uh, build the process uh, within minutes and not hours if not days I use Ccache and as you can see uh, it takes a lot of space from my hard disk um, it's around 44 gigabytes but uh, it can help uh, uh, avoiding uh, duplicate uh, compilation or a recurrent uh, compilation of uh, uh, files so that's it so I can run the uh, LibreOffice that I've actually built uh, dot slash instar slash program slash s office 
and the asset and uh, these are the examples I was working on and as you can see uh, I'm using X11 uh, as the UI renderer you may uh, use for example GTK and uh, this can be changed uh, by uh, changing a environment variable so that's it and uh, I can also uh, open the source code inside uh, um, development uh, environment integrated development environment like Qt Creator so if I want to do that I should invoke make Qt Creator ID integration it takes a while and it creates uh, the project file usable in Qt Creator and I can open the uh, project file which is named lo.pro um, there are other uh, IDEs usable for Linux for example Visual uh, Studio Code or um, Eclipse or uh, for example KDevelop or even VIM these are the things that can be used uh, in uh, Linux so it takes a while it uh, creates the project file and you're done so I invoke Qt Creator and I've already loaded the project file so these are the files uh, and folders from the project you can easily for example find um, some uh, symbols for example that OU string buffer that we talked about and here it is and as you can see the same file is found here and I can go to the definition of cell warrant unused and the same thing has happened uh, I, I'm now inside types that edge which is inside includes a cell slash types that itch so this is very useful and I can select among uh, different uh, build and run options and if I press run I will see the LibreOffice and if I change something it may take a while it compiles and then uh, the, app the application uh, will be shown uh, this is much easier from working in command line and working with VIM and the same thing is visible here uh, because uh, I've uh, not set the uh, UI to X11 here now uh, here I see the uh, GTK uh, tree uh, UI and that's okay so this is very useful and can help you develop another good option is using lip, uh, Visual Studio Code so um, if I open this uh, and I go to file open folder I can just uh, open the core folder I've done this before so I simply open this folder and you see all these files um, I can open each file and I work I can work with several C++ files here for example the EMF reader that's XX that was something I was working on uh, please make sure that you have installed the C++ C++ extension from Microsoft okay so this is the code and it's a very uh, good IDE but uh, <laughs> you want 
you need to make sure that you have enough RAM in order to uh, use this. So I can run and debug the application, but first I should set lat.json. So you should go to the program section. This is an example that I need to fix. Workspace slash edit out is not correct. I should set instpir slash program slash sofis that bean. This is the actual binary file. The sofis uh, is uh, a script that loads this binary. I should uh, set program to the exact binary. Uh, I start debugging and after that I, s I will see that the LibreOffice application comes up and I can use the uh, debugging tools that are available inside the uh, Visual Studio Code and that's something very helpful. So this is LibreOffice code and is uh, very uh, useful. Uh, this is something that can be used in Linux. Let's build the buffers in Windows. So you need uh, several things in Windows and uh, the first one is the Microsoft Visual C++ compiler. So if you go to visualstudio.microsoft.com you will see several options for downloading Visual Studio. So I've downloaded the community edition of 2019 and I've installed it. So this is the Visual Studio installer. If you haven't installed it before you can use it to install uh, the uh, version you want. So uh, this is the Visual Studio Community 2019 and I've also installed Visual Studio Community 2022 preview. Uh, both of them are free and with the recent changes on the Braffis code, uh, Visual Studio 2022 is also usable. But um, I prefer to stick to uh, 2019 version as uh, it is uh, tested uh, much more and uh, if you have installed the default options you should make sure that the individual components that are needed are installed here so if we go back to uh, the uh, LibreOffice on Windows building uh, on Windows on Wiki uh, and if you go to Visual Studio section we will see that several uh, uh, components uh, should be checked and all of them should be installed. These are the individual components that you should have installed. Let's check some of them. For example, uh, Windows Universal C runtime should be installed. Let's check. Yes, we have installed it. If you haven't installed uh, all of these uh, components that you should check one by one, uh, you should check. Uh, uh, um, yeah, you should check all of uh, these and then click install, and make sure all of these are installed. After you have made uh, sure that all of these are installed, then uh, we will install C by G Vin. Uh, so. You should uh, download the 64-bit uh, version and if you want to install it, uh, you should go to command line and uh, use this command. Let's see, yes, this command. It actually invokes the installer with some parameters. So I've installed uh, CYGVIN but I'm going to uh, install it for another time and uh, it helps if something is not updated it will get updated so let's invoke this command inside the downloads folder and as you will see the installer comes up 
after accepting the default values you will see that um, it will show you the list of software that uh, are needed uh, that you want to install and uh, those that were uh, selected in the, uh, via the options will be checked here and uh, you can also add uh, whatever application you want to install here so nothing happens here because I have installed before and there is no recent update if uh, you're doing this for the first time you will see a lot of things here so uh, nothing special happens here and uh, just make sure everything is up to date and uh, it's finished so you can uh, close this uh, console and you should make sure that uh, when you want to clone LODE and the source code you're not using the uh, git from windows because the end of line is different inside Linux and Windows. So uh, I should uh, find the LODE page inside Wiki, development slash LODE, and I should follow the instructions. I'm doing uh, this manually. Uh, so I need to clone LODE somewhere that is not a network drive, that uh, its name uh, does not uh, exceed eight characters, aim of the folders, and only uh, uh, use A to Z and 0 to 9 and no spaces and other special characters. So I have also done this before and uh, and I go to CYG drive, C and users and then Osan which is my username and documents when I want to clone because I have done clone before uh, it says the destination path already exists that's fine so I go inside LODE I invoke setup dash dash prereq in which installs prerequisites because I have done this before uh, nothing new happens and then I should uh, export LED home and then uh, I go inside the dev uh, slash core folder and I invoke LODE underline home slash uh, opt slash bin slash make uh, if, if I have uh, uh, I haven't run autogen I have to run autogen before but because I have uh, executed dot slash autogen before uh, this uh, will work fine let's uh, take a look at my autogen options inside autogen that input so I've ins essentially enabled uh, debugging and I have uh, activated the JDK and I've disabled some of the options so as you can see here I'm using uh, Visual Studio 2022 but if uh, I want to stick to uh, 2019 I should comment this out and I've also uh, set the parallelism to 1 so uh, because I had problems on this machine or is the virtual machine uh, uh, I uh, reduce the number of parallel tasks to only one. So if I invoke uh, dot slash autogen dot slash, as you can see, uh, the configuration process will start and everything uh, is checked. and after the configuration script uh, made uh, sure that everything is fine uh, it will uh, start building uh, it will help us uh, build LibreOffice 
so let it finish it takes a while and after that we can build the buffers okay everything is checked this is JD code uh, there are situations that you encounter problem and you should uh, carefully check uh, the areas that you've encountered an error in order to find the source of the problem and fix it so the ant is checked, the JUnit is checked all of this are available and another thing uh, to make sure that uh, antivirus don't cause problem for you you should add uh, the uh, CYGVN and build folder to uh, the exclusion from your antivirus so uh, everything is safe here because it is built on your computer and the sources are checked so everything is fine then I invoke uh, LODE home slash opt uh, slash bin slash make so that's it because I have built uh, this before I expect uh, the compilation process to finish uh, somehow fast because there are not a lot of things to do and it should uh, finish uh, in a short period of time so let's wait and see as you can see some um, images are converted to zip here this happens usually every time so it's no problem If your computer is uh, fast enough building things uh, from scratch won't take uh, more than one hour but if uh, you don't have a new computer with enough RAM it may take for example half a day to uh, build the profits from sources so be prepared for this amount of time if you don't have a decent computer um, and it takes a lot of storage so uh, preparing for example as seen here um, at least uh, 25 gigabytes uh, is something that uh, you should uh, know and you should have this amount of uh, free space in order to uh, successfully build the profit so there are a lot of um, modules that as you can see are built and everything um, are built here so it is finished and now we can invoke instir slash program slash sofs.exe and uh, I have forgotten. so instir slash program slash is the uh, libreoffice that I have built and you can see the output so we're done and we could be able to build the buffers after that we could do a lot of other things changing in the buffers code easy hacks what is an easy hack it is a simple straightforward task 
and it can be also something other than program but we are focused on programming it can be solved by a limited effort from the newcomers so newcomers can uh, do that can fix that problem and this is because it is evaluated by the developers and code pointers are available the instructions are somehow known and it is considered a good starting point if you want to see an easy hack you should go to bugzilla and see the bugs labeled with labeled with easy hack and also uh, there is a good uh, categorization of this easy hack inside the wiki so if you uh, go to development slash easy hacks page in the wiki you will find the list of easy hacks categorized by difficulty program language and others so there are different complexity levels and this is actually examined by some of the well-known experienced developers here uh, beginner medium and interesting that is somehow more difficult let's see an example or sample easy hack uh, the task is use pragma once instead of include cards so this is uh, with the difficulty level beginner and uh, the task is to find the headers that use include cards as you know uh, in order to avoid uh, duplicate inclusion of header files and um, putting one header multiple times inside a C++ file uh, there's something called include guards if not they have uh, a symbol uh, it is defined and in the end uh, uh, the end if comes so this is something uh, traditionally used in all the uh, header files but these days uh, it is easy to use uh, Hashmark Pragma once instead. So you should find uh, instances of uh, include cards. You can do that with git, uh, jurep, uh, hashmark if not def, star dot uh, 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 and then uh, you should remove the include cards and you should fix the uh, white space and you should remove the duplicate new lines and then add uh, sharp pragma once instead so uh, this bug is actually uh, inside bugzilla with uh, this address as you can see here but here the bug number is important and it is referred uh, in both the commit title and the commit message with tdf sharp 143148 so this is also something important this is uh, the uh, actual uh, easy hack that I was talking about as can be seen inside the uh, Bugzilla so let's talk about Garrett so what is Garrett? when you want to um, get your code merged into LibreOffice uh, it is uh, necessary to submit your code to Garrett in order to get uh, reviewed so you should set up your system for uh, connecting to Garrett first you should uh, create keepers and uh, there is a good script inside LibreOffice code uh, called Elogarit. So if you invoke dot slash Elogarit setup, you will uh, ask several questions and uh, then uh, everything is set up for you. Uh, there are situations that the keeper is not created. So in such a situation, you should uh, refer to the tutorial that I put the link here. It helps you to create ed25519 9 SSH key that is uh, a standard uh, better than RSA for generating keys then you should add your public key to Garrett and after that you should test it 
dot slash elogate test if uh, that uh, shows a uh, successful message success message you can make sure that the setup was successful uh, uh, so if that does not happen uh, you should think about uh, ways to fix this and you can ask me for help then uh, you should create a commit uh, using git commit and after that you should submit your changes by invoking dot uh, slash grid submit master so you should submit your changes to grid in order to get reviewed then you should uh, search for a reviewer and you can uh, add me as a reviewer or you can find other mentors and developers and add them and if you look carefully to uh, Garrett you can find some of those who do reviews then uh, you will get several review comments and you should do uh, all these uh, steps until you get plus one or better than that plus two so uh, first of all whenever you uh, upload some changes called uh, the patch set to Garrett the uh, continuous integration uh, tools here Jenkins starts building the process with your changes for all the available platforms from Windows to Linux to Mac OS to Android and other known platforms so if everything was fine and if the build process on all the platforms was okay uh, you will uh, get verified from the Jenkins if some problems were reported by Jenkins you should fix them and after that uh, you will get suggestions or possibly corrections and comments from the reviews you should respond to the comments by uh, fixing the suggestions and doing the corrections asked uh, from you for example if you're asked to uh, change a variable name or do the things uh, using other methods you should do that in order you to get your code merged sometimes uh, the change is simply uh, removing some extra wide space but sometimes it can be uh, more complex and whenever you you're fixing the problem you should do git commit commit, commit dash dash amend and submit the changes again using elogrid submit master dot slash elogrid and in this way uh, you will upload the next patch set so patch set one patch set two patch set three and uh, it goes like that and after the reviewer or reviewers uh, accept your uh, changes one of uh, the reviewers will give you plus two and after that he will uh, get your code merged please note that if you're submitting uh, code to LibreOffice for the first time you have to uh, send a, a license statement to the uh, developer mailing list so make sure that uh, you read uh, the uh, license, uh, license statement suggested uh, in the wiki and also you should add your name to the list of developers uh, inside wiki so these are the things that you should do before your first submission can get merged this is a screenshot from Garrett with some of the submissions from several people and as you can see um, some of these uh, uh, submissions are waiting for someone to uh, get add uh, to, to be added as a reviewer one of the uh, submissions with uh, the cross mark red cross mark is uh, something that had problems 
uh, with uh, building uh, the code but others have passed the uh, continuous integration the Jenkins uh, build and uh, also the tests that are accompanied with the uh, build process some of them may also wait for the build process to finish so let's see all this in action in order to be able to submit patches to Garrett, you should set up your public-private key inside Linux or CYGB. So let's do it. Uh, you should use the utility at Garrett. It has an option setup and it uh, says you should press enter and uh, in this way uh, a public-private key is generated. I uh, give a password and uh, I should enter the password again. It says they doesn't match. If they doesn't match, you have to make sure that you enter this correctly. So this is the uh, key that is generated. Uh, you shouldn't share it with everyone. Uh, you shouldn't share it with no one. And uh, this is uh, asking for um, my username. I enter um, saying at sign uh, with the office that RG, and I'm done. If I run elaborate test, I will see that the signature of the uh, Garrett is shown to me and it says um, it's not okay because I have not added my public key to the uh, Garrett so let's see what's my public key slash id underline rsa dot pub so yes this is the uh, key and I can copy that the only difference is that I should change my username to something more appropriate uh, this is my email so I'm copying this copy and then I go to the uh, Garrett. I've logged in before so you need an account here. You should create an account in uh, the uh, single sign-on for like a foundation. So I'm going to the um, SSH key and I add my SSH key here and I click add. So I'm done and after that I, I can see the SSH keys here after that uh, I run uh, a great test yes this seems to be in trouble so I can check So the username is wrong, actually. So let's fix the configuration. My username is the same. So now the settings should be correct. I should provide the password. And yes, the third setup was successful. Now I can uh, make some changes and submit those changes after um, I uh, provide some commit. So uh, if uh, I do commit, then I can send it uh, by that slash elogarit submit master. But because I have not 
done this, uh, I uh, skipped this step. So let's go back to Garrett and these are the open changes. Uh, let's uh, look at um, some of the changes that have been accepted before. For example, the one that uh, we were talking about, like the include guard. As you can see, uh, a lot of people have done this uh, and uh, it is uh, TDF. Right, let's search again. As you can see, a lot of people have done this, and uh, for example, let's look at uh, one of them and see the things that happened inside the patches. So uh, it has a title. It says "Use Pragma once instead of include guards," and some description. And uh, this is essentially changing multiple files, but you don't have to uh, change multiple files. Changing only one file is enough. So, uh, as you can see, the include card is removed and the pragma once is uh, uh, placed instead of it. So, uh, at first, uh, you see the uh, Passet one, then Jenkins uh, is added automatically, and I've added uh, by the author uh, as a reviewer, and I provided mm, some commands. For example, I uh, asked the author to remove some lines, and he just removed that. And after that, uh, there are some situations that build fail, but you should. Uh, try continuing by rebasing or asking someone to rebuild and uh, after a while uh, we took uh, we uh, came to a position that uh, I've uh, put a plus one and I've uh, written looks good to me and after that Ilmari which uh, which is uh, one of uh, our mentors came in and asked for the license statement and the license uh, statement was actually uh, posted by the author to the uh, mailing list and after everything was fine uh, the code review plus two shows that everything is okay so after that the uh, patch uh, is actually merged into the office code this is essentially what uh, you should do, you should respond to comments, you should uh, fix the problems, and you should uh, get both the plus one from uh, either a person or Jenkins uh, for getting verified, and also plus two from a code reviewer who has uh, commit access. So if you can do that, uh, then you're uh, one of the developers of LibreOffice. Uh, you should add your name here. This is the license statement. All of my past and future contributions to LibreOffice may be licensed under the MPL V2, V2, LGPL V3 plus dual license. This is essentially something that you should send to uh, the mailing, developer uh, mailing list and this is the list of contributors, so uh, individuals and companies. So you should add your name here if uh, you've contributed to LibreOffice, and you should uh, put your license statement here. And this is something that you should do, and you should put your name somewhere here, and uh, you should do this according to uh, your uh, family name and uh, should uh, note that this list is sorted. A path to growth and development. These are the things I suggest you to do. First, you should understand C++ and if you're working with other languages, you should have a good understanding of the language you're developing with. 
then you should understand Git and Gert. So I assume that you know and you you want to go to the next step. Then you should be able to build LibreOffice. So I have talked extensively on building LibreOffice today. So I hope that you uh, don't have any problem, but if you had, you can contact me. Then you should do uh, your uh, first easy hack. You should fix the things uh, in the easy hack you've chosen. And uh, I think a, a good place to start is an easy hack with the difficulty beginner. Then you submit it and you go through all these things, uh, responding to the reviewers and uh, doing fixes as they're suggesting to get your code merged. I suggest uh, that you do at least 10 bug triages before going to the next step because we think that uh, a developer should understand how uh, bug reporting and bug management work and this is something that uh, I think you should do before going to the next step. The next step would be doing at least five easy hacks with difficulty beginner. After that you can work on regressions so what are regressions? Regressions are special kinds of bugs that happen when something was correct before and was working but in the newer version but cha by changing uh, stuff in uh, various parts of the uh, code uh, the problem uh, showed up and it was not there before so this is called a regression and with a trick called bisecting and here by bisecting uh, you can find the commit that actually created the problem and in this way it is somehow easier for the developers to fix this kinds of bugs so it is suggested that you should do at least five regressions then you should write at least 10 unit tests. So um, unit testing is something very important in order to make sure that uh, if uh, some bug is fixed it doesn't happen in the future and if uh, someone uh, changes the code and uh, creates the problem again the make check won't pass and um, that, that uh, person cannot add uh, his code to the LibreOffice unless uh, he or she can fix the problem. So then it is suggested that you do at least five easy hacks with the difficulty medium and after that I think uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, become someone who understands more about LibreOffice and then you can uh, read uh, some more complicated documents about uh, LibreOffice and you can uh, go in the path to become a, a, a developer with uh, uh, ability to with the ability to fix the bugs and add the features and stuff like that. These are the recommended readings. Uh, I suggest you to look, take a look at comprehensive list of learning materials that are inside uh, wiki, uh, inside development slash learning materials. Uh, there are a lot of articles and books and references and also examples and uh, conference presentations in video and um, PDF slides. All of this can be found uh, inside this page. It's a long list of uh, many uh, learning materials that can be helpful for you. Then the LibreOffice API documentation is something very useful for those who want to work with LibreOffice Azteca. And at last, uh, a list of development tools. 
are uh, available via api.libreoffice.org slash docs slash tools.html Thank you very much. That's it. I hope that you have uh, enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to answer you. Thank you very much.